distribute habit-forming drugs, to encourage prostitution, to disseminate venereal diseases, to do anything which is likely to cause demoralization and weaken the power of the people? Are you prepared to commit suicide if and when we order you to do so? This, folks, is an example of the philosophy that the ends justify the means. The initiate should do as he was required as long as the act benefited the brotherhood. There is no morality under such an oath. So murder of the unfit, those unwilling to adopt the new religion, will be acceptable, and those who do the annihilating are to feel no remorse. In the view of the New Age religion, the murderers have served mankind well. But this callous disregard for the right to life of every human on the face of the earth has been predicted before in the New Testament. John was moved to write in John chapter 6, verse 12, quote, Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service, unquote. The New World Order, ladies and gentlemen, will sail in on a sea of blood. Don't forget, folks, Monday, March 15th, 8 p.m. to 11, Lafayette Hotel, 2223, El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego. That's Monday, March 15th. I'll be there from 8 to 11, the Lafayette Hotel, 2223, El Cajon Boulevard, San Diego. I'm going to present a lecture with uh, quite a bit of videotape entitled The Sacrifice King and prove to you, once and for all, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that John F. Kennedy was not killed by our government, but by the mystery schools, specifically the branch known as the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. You will see the missing frames, the footage of the Zapruder film that the public has never been allowed to see before. You'll see it with your own eyes. You're going to see and hear things that are going to stretch the bounds of credibility, stretch your imagination, but it will all become clear to you. You will have no doubts when you walk out at the end exactly who killed Kennedy and why. Well, let's continue here. The New Age religion, folks, is going to have a worldwide leader, a charismatic political and religious leader that they call Lord Maitreya. At least so far, that's who they call him, or that's what they call him. This individual, as far as I know, has not made his public appearance yet, but the New Agers claim that he is on the earth at the present time. They claim that he came to live with the Asian community in East London, England, in July 1977 by descending from his ancient retreat in the Himalaya Mountains along the border of India and Tibet. They further believe that his imminent emergence into full public view is assured. They also claim that this individual is the one that the Christians call Christ, the Jews call the Messiah, the Buddhists call the Fifth Buddha, the Hindus call Krishna, and the Muslims call the Imam Mahdi. In other words, all of the major religions of the world are awaiting the arrival of this one individual. It is their claim that this one individual living now in London is the one expected by all of these religions. However, when we search London with a fine-tooth comb, we can find no trace of any living individual named the Maitreya or fitting this description are recognized as this religious leader. Isn't that strange? And they say that he is on the earth now, patiently waiting for the appointed time to reveal his existence to the peoples of the world. They say that he will apparently assume the leadership of all of these religions, and when he does, he will create a one-world religion. The New Agers had written that in the esoteric tradition previously defined as being intended for or understood by only a cho chosen few as an inner group of disciples or initiates, in other words, the esoteric means hidden. They claim that the word Christ is not the name of an individual, but the name of an office or function within the spiritual hierarchy of masters. They claim that the masters are a group of perfected men who have guided human evolution from behind the scenes for centuries, and they believe that this Lord Maitreya is that Christ. Your Manly P. Hall has written of this individual by identifying him as, quote, the way, the truth, and the life, which coming to every life redeems all who accept it, unquote. 
Tex Mars has quoted this individual as saying, quote, My army is ready for battle. My masters of wisdom and myself at the head. That battle will be fought for the continuance of man on this earth. Rest assured that my army shall triumph, unquote. Well, it appears that the battle to be fought between the followers of Lord Maitreya and the rest of humanity is still in the future. But at least one of the participants has an army already prepared. How about you? One who claims to have seen the birth in a vision of someone who seems to fulfill the requirements of this Maitreya was astrologer Jean Dixon, her major claim to being a prophet is her prediction, reportedly made before the event of the assassination of President John Kennedy in 1963. However, her credentials were dealt a serious blow in 1968 when she also prophesied that the Soviet Union would be the first to put a man on the moon. <laughs> Another of her prophecies was that the Republican Party would be victorious in 1968. And it was with the election of Richard Nixon, a Republican. But she also predicted that within the following decade, 1970 to 1979, the two-party system, as we have known it, will vanish from the American scene. She further predicted that Richard M. Nixon had excellent vibrations for the good of America and would serve the country well. <laughs> so you can see that she's a very accurate person from which to judge the course of the future. If you want to know the truth, folks, I am the most accurate prophet of future events in history. In history. Those who question her inability to correctly predict that America, not the Soviet Union, would become the first to place a man on the moon, and that the two-party system has not vanished from the scene, and that President Nixon apparently did not have good vibrations for this nation and would later be removed from office by the event commonly referred to as Watergate, can only presume that she must have been given inside information about the assassination of President Kennedy. And that would account for her knowing at least in that event the true future. Secondly, one can only wonder why this non-prophet should be listened to about anything after her appalling record on prophecies, but there is reason to believe that she might have been asked to write an account of this vision of the important birth by the New Age religion, because they wanted the official imprimatur of someone commonly referred to as a prophet. In other words, folks, her prophecy might have been written to legitimize his claim to be a man-god, so that when this individual made his public appearance himself, the public would marvel at the fact that his birth had fulfilled a prophecy. <laughs> but in any event, Ruth Montgomery wrote a book about her entitled The Gift of Prophecy, in which she wrote about the very revealing and intriguing vision that Jean Dixon allegedly had. Quote, the vision, which Jean considers the most significant and soul-stirring of her life, occurred on February the 5th, 1962. She saw the brightest sun she had ever seen. Isn't it funny how that sun always pops into this stuff? Now remember that reference to the sun, folks. Stepping out of the brightness were a pharaoh and Queen Nefertiti. Remember here that these two individuals were Egyptian. And this will become significant later on. In fact, it's already significant if you've been listening to this show. The couple thrust forth a baby as if offering it to the entire world. Now, another interpretation, because they sprang from the sun, could be that this is Osiris and Isis, and the child is Horus. And that is exactly the esoteric real interpretation although Jeannie Dixon never said this. He looked at the baby and then said, according to the author, quote, I knew here is the beginning of wisdom, unquote. Remember what I told you? Osiris is the doctrine, Isis is the church. The child Horus is the body of illumined initiate. So what Ruth Montgomery wrote can be summarized as follows. A sun deity gives the world a child from Egypt who possesses enormous wisdom, and this event allegedly took place on 